and he keeps showing I write it for myself to seek the knowing Kept the laws to keep me glowing Was laid back, wasn't shy uh -uh. I come from the greatest tribe of earth David Solomon, you're how it's shot Alright, Shalom, Shalom First and foremost, we like to say Which means all praises to Yahweh in the name of Yahweh Shai. Yahweh being the name of the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Yahweh Shai being the name of his only begotten Son, the anointed Savior of the nation of Israel, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, who is a so called black man, right? Who are we? Sakari Philly, the children of the light, coming out to let our light shine in this dark and bitter world, right? We are living in Babylon which is the revamped Roman Empire, Babylon the Great Whore, as Revelation 17 says, which is um, the valley of the shadow of death, right? This is where we live, a land without any order. So you go ahead and get that for me in Job, you'll get Isaiah 5 and 20, right? Because this land, America, Babylon the Great, the scriptures, specifically the prophet Job and King David, called it the valley of the shadow of death. Why? because we're surrounded by death everywhere you look, everywhere you turn, death is what's being propagated. That's why this place is called the Valley of the Shadow of Death. You got it? Yeah, that's it. That's it right there, yeah. Now, it's the book of Job, chapter 10, verse 21. Before I go, whence I shall not return, even to the land of darkness. Right, the land of darkness, right? Read on. And the shadow of death. And the shadow of death. A land of darkness as darkness itself. Dark as darkness itself. Read on. And of the shadow of death uh -huh. without any order. Without any order. Because this place, America, Babylon the Great, has flipped order upside down. They call good evil. They call evil good. They call light darkness. And they call darkness light. I'll give you an example. You being in the Christian church, you being a Christian church member and being wicked six days out the week, well, seven days out the week, really, but you go in the church on Sunday and you calling on sweet Jesus, you getting on your knees before, uh, you saying in, in front of an altar, you bowing down and you calling some man father, your spiritual father, as we were commanded not to do. The world will tell you that that's light. That that's being in light. Oh, we're saved. We got salvation already. No, that is walking in complete darkness. Being out of order. You're not functioning properly. Your mind is not functioning properly. Right? Read what you got. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 5 and verse 20. Woe unto them that call evil good. Right, and that's why this place, Babylon the Great, needs to be destroyed. That's why it said, woe unto you. Right, read on. And good evil. Right? They call evil good and good evil. They call us evil for exhorting our people to repent, to come back to these law, statutes, and commandments and the faith of Yahweh Shai to get themselves right, to get off of drugs, stop being a damn homosexual, stop being a witch or a wizard, stop serving these false gods, stop going into the Baldanica and doing these abominable sacrifices. I practice in voodoo, so on and so forth. We tell our people these things to come out of this wickedness and people look at us and they say that we are evil. But then on the flip side, they will look at the world and look at um, somebody like Little Nas X doing videos with a whole bunch of grown men butt ass naked dancing in the shower and they will say, oh, that's creative, that's creative. This guy's so deep with his artistic expression you guys don't understand how deep and how creative, how beautiful this is. That's a prime example of them calling good evil and evil good. Right. They call us evil when we really are teaching the good, which is the law, statutes, and commandments, and the faith in Yahweh Shai out of the scriptures, right? That is what's good. They call us evil, but the people who are really teaching evil to your kids, like little Nas X, right? Another one, the San Francisco Gay Men's Choir came out and did a song talking about some, we're coming for your children. And four people that was on that Brady Bunch screen, you see how they had the squares like the Brady Bunch and it was a whole bunch of people singing. Four of those guys that were singing 
were convicted pedophiles. They were literally convicted pedophiles. These are sex offenders, and these are the people who say that they're coming for your children, right? But to the world, that's good. Keep on reading. They put <laughs> darkness for light and light for darkness. They put darkness for light and light for darkness. As Job said, this is the valley of the shadow of death, a land of darkness as darkness itself and as of the shadow of death without any order because there's no order in this place. Um, there's more on that, but. They put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Right, they put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. This is just the inversion of everything that's right. Right, righteousness is being combated at every angle. You had Kamala Harris came out not too long ago and said, I read the Bible and the Bible says that we lead, that we need to love our neighbors. So since we need to love our neighbors, that means that we need to take the vaccine because that's how we show that we love our neighbors. This is a complete stranger and I don't know you, but when I see you, I see a neighbor and I love you. So I'm gonna show that I love you by getting the jab, right? So now let's go to Leviticus 19 to show you what it means to love your brother and your neighbor and the children of your people, right? Because it doesn't mean getting the jab. That's right. That's not what it translates to at all. And you're out of your goddamn mind if you think that getting the jab is gonna solve America's problems, right? Read. 17. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 19 and verse 17. 16. Right. Verse 16. Thou shalt not go up and down as a tailbearer among thy people. Thou shalt not go up and down as a tailbearer amongst thy people. So the context of what's being spoken here is of thy people, the children of Israel, right? Don't spread slanderous gossip about the Israelites. This is a law that a lot of you niggas need to be reminded of, especially in the Israelite community, because y'all seem to forget this at week in and week out, right? Read on. Neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. Neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor, right? So when you see George Floyd had a knee on his neck for nine damn minutes, all those jakes that was standing around with their phones and they was just recording and talking shit in the background recording, but they didn't do nothing, that is a sin according to the law, Bring according to Leviticus 19 and 16. Because if you see your neighbor's life being threatened, you are obligated by God's laws to step in and do something about it, right? Even if it costs you your life, right? Read on. I am the Lord. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Now you have Israelite community members that say, you're not my brother, nigga. You in a different, you don't teach, y'all don't teach that the mark of the beast is the chip, which disclaimer, we over here teach that the mark of the beast is the chip and we are adamantly against it. We tell our people week in and week out not to take the mark of the beast, right? But you have simple ass Israelites who say things like, you're not my brother, brother, because you don't teach that the mark of the beast is the chip, right? Keep on reading. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Right, so your brother is the same as your neighbor, which we're gonna read this in the New Living Translation in order to get the understanding on who's your brother and who's your neighbor, right? Go ahead. This is the book of Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 17 in the NLT. Do not nurse hatred in your heart for any of your relatives. Right, so this is your brother. Your brother is any of your relatives, your fellow Israelite, right? Read on. Confront people directly so you will not be held guilty for their sin. Your folks, right? Keep on reading. Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge. Right, and so hold up, hold up. It says, do not seek or bear a grudge, right? This needs to be read 10 times over and over. This needs, there needs to be a lesson, right? Where we need to get these niggas in a room with a chalkboard and take them like Bart Simpson and make them write Leviticus 19 to 16 to 18 a million times until you get the point, bro. Keep on reading. Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge 
against a fellow Israelite. No, but they're not my brothers if they don't teach the same doctrine. Against a fellow oh, Israelite. Israelite. Right, your neighbor, your brother, the children of your people is a fellow Israelite. And it is a sin according to God's laws to hate them, right? But love your neighbor as yourself. But love your neighbor as yourself. This is what we're commanded to do. You got a point, Benji? Oh, no, you look like you wanted to say something. So it's like, right, so this is what we're commanded to do. We're commanded to spread love amongst our own, amongst our people. This is a problem that we as a community have as a whole, right? You read uh, 1 John 3 and 15. Yeah, you can drop that. Right. Right. So the point, you know what I'm saying? We could bring this out over and over. It'll never get old. Your brother, your neighbor, the children of your people is all synonymous with your fellow Israelite. We are commanded to love one another. So when Yahweh Shai, so called Jesus Christ, in Matthew, the fifth chapter, told you to love your enemies, he was telling you to love the people amongst your own people that have done you dirty in the past to not bear a grudge against them exactly how the law said read what you got 3 and 15 this is book of first john chapter 3 verse 15 whosoever hated his brother is a murderer right if you hate your brother you're a murderer and we know that no murderer is going to inherit the kingdom as a matter of fact read verse 14 god verse 14 we know that we have passed from death unto life we know that we have passed from death unto life we are born again, right? As the Christian church loves to say, oh, we're born again. We're born again. How do you know if you're born again? Because we love the brethren. Because we do what? Because we love the brethren. Because we love our fellow Israelites. We love our own. Keep on reading. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Right, so you can know all the breakdowns. You can know a million and one precepts. You can have the super deep, thick oil, right but if you don't love your brother then you still abide in death right go ahead whosoever hated his brother is a murderer right and if you hate your brother in your heart you're a murderer or you're coming in the spirit of Cain, right who murder his brother read on and ye know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him right and no murderer is going to inherit the kingdom he does not have eternal life abiding in him 